everyone. I'm finally back. Hopefully, I'll get more time to make not just this video on meiosis, but a lot more, uh, hopefully, to cover all the biology and chemistry and physical science um, portion of teas. All right, uh, last time I stopped at mitosis. So today we're going to move on and talk about meiosis. I know a lot of students tend to get confused about meiosis, but I'm going to try to break it down and make it easy. Talk about this before. Mitosis is a process of cell division to make somatic cells. Most of the cells in your body are somatic cells. Hair cells, muscle cells, kidney cells, liver cells, all those cells are somatic cells and they have 46 chromosomes. Now, a few cells, well, not a few, but uh, definitely more than that, but there is a fraction of cells in your body that are not somatic cells. They're known as sex cells or gametes. That's a fancy way to say these cells. So gametes only have 23 chromosomes. Now, so you can see these two groups of cells are very different, right? They have different number of chromosomes. So of course, you can't uh, make these cells with just one process, right? One type of cell division. So you have to have two types of cell division. So mitosis is used to make somatic cells, and meiosis is used to produce sex cells or gametes. Okay. Only sexually producing organisms have meiosis, have this type of cell division. The reason is that in sexual reproduction, you have a process called fertilization, right? And that's when an egg and a sperm cell unite, right? All their genetic materials are fused. They become one cell. That means that each cell, each sex cell, can only carry half of the number of chromosomes, right? So each egg will have 23 chromosomes and the sperm, same thing, 23. So that when they unite, then the new cell has 46 chromosomes, right? And that's the unique number of chromosomes for humans. So again, this is the number that's found in somatic cells, right? The majority of um, the cells in your body. The gametes are really an exception, right? So when we say human species is a unique species, it has its unique number of chromosomes, we're using 46 and not the numbers in gametes, okay? All right, now, if the cell has only half of the chromosomes, that cell is a haploid cell. Now, what if a cell has the entire 46 chromosomes? That's called a diploid. So 23, that's haploid. 46, that's diploid. Now, there's an easy way to differentiate these two terms. DI in diploid, DI means two, right? So, so with DI, you know that diploid cells should have two copies of each chromosome, right? And that's the complete set of chromosomes. All right, now, what about the cells that divide and make daughter cells? in mitosis and the meiosis. Are they haploid or diploid? Now, for both processes, the parent cell is diploid, meaning they have 46 chromosomes, okay? So for both mitosis and meiosis, the initial parent cell is diploid. It has 46 chromosomes. How do mitosis and meiosis differ, right? Why do they pr produce a different number of chromosomes? The answer is easy, because they go through different number of rounds. In mitosis, there is only one round of cell division. And in meiosis, there are two rounds of cell divisions, right? So you divide twice. So meiosis will produce something that's in half, right, as uh, what's in mitosis. So I made this um, almost blank slide and I just want to draw so that you are very, very clear on the differences between mitosis and meiosis. Let's say the parent cell has four chromosomes. Now, some people think, oh, that's not what chromosomes look like. Chromosomes look like this, like the X shape. That's not really 
accurate, right? Because you know this X shape actually actually represents a duplicated chromosome, right? So this chromosome has been duplicated. So there are two copies of the same chromosome, but they're attached. That's why it looks like you know an X shape, but it's a very arbitrary, right? You can make it in different shapes. So each chromosome starts with really just a one line, right? But once it's duplicated, and now you have a two sister chromatase, that's when it looks like the letter X. This is at the very, very beginning of interface. So this whole process is going to be interface. In interface, you know, DNA chromosomes are, are duplicated. Um, so you will have two sets of chromosomes. So what happens now is each chromosome will have two sister chromatids, but they're still attached. So in the parent cell, we start with the four chromosomes, right? Okay. So at the end of the interface, you still have four chromosomes because each of these has two sister chromatids attached, right? So it's still one piece, but technically it really has eight chromosomes, right? But it's in the form of sister chromatids. Okay. Same thing here, four chromosome pieces, if that helps, but it's actually eight chromosomes or eight sister chromatids, right? And the two sister chromatids are identical copies of a particular chromosome, all right? So in mitosis, this cell is going to divide just the ones, okay? one round of a division. So one round, it's going to generate two cells, okay? And then everything is going to be separated, right? The two sister chromatids will be pulled apart. And now each sister chromatid becomes an independent chromosome. So each of the two sister chromatids will end up in one of the two daughter cells, right? So you have four here and also four in the other daughter cell. So now when you look at each daughter cell, they have four chromosomes, exactly the same number as the parent cell. So you double all the chromosomes and then you divide them. So the number remains the same. Now, what happens in meiosis? Remember there are two rounds, right? So for the first round, parent cell is gonna produce two daughter cells. Now this is different because in meiosis, in the first round, you do not separate the sister chromatids. So let me repeat. In the first cell division in meiosis, you do not separate the two sister chromatids. They remain connected. What you separate is separate the two homologous chromosomes. So let's say these two are homologous chromosomes. These two are the other pair of homologous chromosomes. Okay, so again, remember, in the first round of meiosis, do not separate the two sister chromatids. Okay? What you do instead is separate the pair of homologous chromosomes. All right, so this one, let's say, ends up here, and same with this one. And then the two yellow ones end up here, right? And then now the two cells have different chromosomes, right? All right, now let's count the number of chromosomes. For both daughter cells, you have one, two, two chromosomes. And again, if it helps you understand two chromosome pieces, how, how's that? Two, but technically, you really have four chromosomes, right? Four chromosomes. So that's round one. And now we're going to do round two. So this daughter cell now becomes the parent cell. It's going to divide and generate two daughter cells, second generation daughter cells. Okay, now in round two, you separate the two sister chromatids. Separate them, separate them. So round two is really like mitosis. 
because you split the two sister chromatids. All right, so what do you get in the end? Each daughter cell will get one of the two chromosomes, right? And if you do the same thing for the second daughter cell, it does exactly the same thing, right? So separate here, separate here, just like mitosis, each cell will have two yellow chromosomes. All right, now let's count the number of chromosomes in the new daughter cells. So one, two. Everyone has two. So you start with a four, and then you end up with two, right? So in meiosis, everything is reduced by half. And that's perfect, right? Because when the gametes reunite during fertilization, then the number of chromosomes will go back to the normal number. All right, that's really the gist of mitosis and meiosis. The key to differentiate the two cell divisions is in round one. Okay? Just remember in round one, you do not split the two sister chromatids. You do not split the conjoint twins. You only split the homologous chromosomes, chromosomes that are the same type of chromosome, but um, they are two different copies, right? One is from the father, one is from the mother. So your goal in the first round of meiosis is to separate these two homologous chromosomes. And the two sister chromatids, there are no changes to them. Okay? They just remain the same. So that's really the key. If you figure out how round one works, round two, just follow mitosis, right? Everyone's good with mitosis. Okay, so I have a good figure here, but I think we have gone over um, really the key steps. Um, but if you have a copy of this uh, PowerPoint, you can go through the graph and I have some more information here to kind of help you go through the different steps. All right. Now I made this uh, table to kind of compare the two processes, the, the similarity, um, both cell divisions start with one parent cell, right? And that parent cell has to be a diploid cell. Doesn't matter uh, if you're going through meiosis, the parent cell has to be diploid. And this parent cell will divide into multiple daughter cells, right? It could be two if you're talking about mitosis and four if it's meiosis. I do have a note here. In males, Meiosis will produce four sperm cells from each of the spermatogonia. So sperm spermatogonia is the germline cell that will produce sperm cells. So each spermatogonia will generate four sperm cells. Now in females, it's a little bit different. So each oogonia make four cells, but three of the cells will just die, they will deteriorate, they will um, break down. Um, that leaves a one cell that will become an oocyte. And this really kind of ensures that this, whichever the surviving cell is, it has enough nutrient, right, to support embryonic development later. If you divided that nutrients evenly among four cells, that's just not gonna be enough for the embryo. So nature has this way that when females make oocytes, three of them will be eliminated. And there'll be one winner, and that winner will take on all the nutrients. And this will ensure that the embryo will have um, enough nutrients for further development. And I have been saying this, right? The daughter cells from mitosis will have the same number of cells as the parent cell. But... The daughter cells in meiosis will only have half of the number of chromosomes. Okay. Um, let's say we have an organism, and this organism has 40 chromosomes. Okay. So species X. Okay. So how many chromosomes do you expect to see in this creature's, um, say, liver cell? and sperm. Liver cell, that's somatic cell, 
is produced by mitosis. So each new cell will have the same number as the parent cell, right? Or the number as the species unique number of chromosomes. So that's 40. Sperm cell only has half of the unique number of chromosomes for the species. So it's going to be 20. All right, I hope this is helpful. Um, and then we're going to do some practice questions. Okay, this is a multiple answers question. Which of the following statements are true about gamete production? So when you see gamete, your brain should think about meiosis. Select all that apply. Okay, how about A? The parent cell divides twice to produce four daughter cells. That's correct. B, the daughter cells contain half the number of chromosomes in the parent cells. That's also correct. C, the daughter cells are diploid. That's wrong, right? It should be haploid. D, the production process results in daughter cells that are genetically different than parent cells. So let's go over here. This might be um, a better figure to discuss this. So you can see over here, this is the parent cell, right? It has four chromosomes. The two blue ones are homologous chromosomes, and so are the two brown ones. All right, so that's the genetic makeup for parents. Now, of course, we're going to have more than just four chromosomes, right? But this, this is just for simplicity. So this is the genetic makeup for the parents. And then look at the genetic makeup for the daughter cells. Now, first of all, the number of chromosomes is not the same, right? So there's no way that the parent cell and the four daughter cells are genetically identical. That's just that's not going to happen. The number of chromosomes are different, and chromosomes carry genes, right? So that means the daughter cells are not going to um, have all the uh, genetic versions of genes in the cells. Now, also, the uh, four daughter cells are different as well, but that's a more complicated process. Um, so that involves crossover and random assortment. So that's a topic that's included in the later lesson. So I will save this information for that lesson. Last statement, the process produces somatic cells. You know, that's wrong because it makes gametes or sex cells. Okay, so the answer is A, B, and D. All right, next question. So this is the key to differentiate meiosis and mitosis. You just need to know which chromosomes are split during meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So what's your answer for meiosis 1? I mentioned this probably three or four times, maybe even more, right? Homologous chromosomes are split during meiosis 1. And then in meiosis 2, that's like mitosis, right? And that's when the sister chromatids are split. All right, that's meiosis. I hope the information is helpful. Thank you for watching.